Now we get to make drawing files of all of our different parts. So let's go to New Drawing. And once this opens up, we're going to change the sheet. So right click on Sheet, go down to Edit, make sure this is set to A size paper. Click OK. We need to delete off the ANSI large. Instead, drop in the ANSI A. And now we can go to our base and let's look for one of our parts. And this is only showing assembly files, so I'm going to change this to all inventor file types. And we're going to go ahead and start with the column. It's probably the most complicated, so we'll do this one together. And let's shrink this down since it's not going to fit yet. Let's go half size. Okay, I'm going to put in these two views and then go to projected and make another view off of this. And let's see if this is going to be enough. This will not be enough. So let's do uh, one more projected view. Here, we'll want to see the top of this. And, well, I guess we can leave those in. Okay. Ooh. Well, we really do need one more view. This seems like a lot, especially if you haven't done many of these before but we do need this front view as well. And it's because we have these screw holes here. We have these that are showing up as countersinks on one side and just the through holes on the other. So let's go ahead and start dimensioning this. And uh, let's actually do this in a way that, well, the one that you would come into the most problems with. So for starters, let's put center marks on all three of these and then go to your center line. Click on the centers of each center mark. Right click and hit create. Then we can put in our other center points here. Actually, let's undo that. We're going to mark these on the back side. Even though they're through holes, they're done on the back side here. They're not meant to be shown on this side because it gets confusing. There's actually a big hole. Uh, but we can go to our hole and thread note and mark off some of these like this should be oh it'd be that times three. This is a big countersink. It's a main feature. Okay, I think that's all of our holes. Uh, let's edit just a few of these. So for example, this one, we want to say uh, X3, showing that there's three holes that have that same size. Similarly, uh, X2, there's two of those. And this one, I think we're just going to put a TYP. There's more than three. Didn't get all my center marks in yet, so let's go back and do that. And notice I'm only putting them on the views I'm going to be dimensioning to. So I'm not going to bother putting a center mark here because I have one on this side and this is where I'm going to put the dimension. I think I'm going to pause the video here and I'll re or unpause it once I have all the dimensions on. So hang tight. I'm going to quickly unpause where I'm at. I want to show you just a couple of things. Uh, first off, I do have most of the dimensions on here but it is not finished and the main reason is because if we look back at this there are some tolerances on some of the parts that are more important than others. Uh, for example, this gap here always has to be a certain width, otherwise the 
uh, rack that's supposed to go in between here will not fit. So this particular dimension, the half inch plus 0 0.005 minus 0 0.000, we have to show that on our drawing. The way you show dimensions on drawings is first off you have to put on a normal dimension like we have here I'm gonna double click on it and I can go to precision and tolerance and this is going to be uh, not a symmetric but a deviation that's gonna change in one direction and not the other and it says it's gonna change plus point zero zero five minus point zero 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 and select OK and I have to change one other thing on here looks like for the tolerance I have to show that it goes out three decimal places and now here it's giving us a preview of what I just did okay and there are a few that are like that um, that's one of them obviously and then you also have like here's a plus or minus here you have a limit dimension no it's not a limit dimension it's a counter bore those may be the only two and if that is right let's just go ahead and do this one as well so on this countersink we have a plus or minus point zero zero two on the countersink that was shown here go to precision and tolerance when it's a hole it looks a little bit different but it's the same thing uh, you have to click this expand button and on the countersink itself not the depth correct yep on the diameter of the countersink it's plus or minus point zero zero two so it is symmetric and it goes to three digits past the decimal plus or minus point zero zero two I have to just move a couple of things around here so it will fit, but that should be everything that we need for this. So let me zoom out so you can see it, and I'm going to pause the video again here. I'm going to go on to the next part, which is going to be the uh, table, and we're just going to come back in when the table is already finished. So here's all your drawing that you need for the table. And I couldn't get the chamfer to show up. I think it's because we had these cuts in this here. So I actually cheated a little bit. I used leader text instead. I zoomed in on an edge and just made text off of that. I had this match up with what it said over on our uh, drawing here with the 45 degrees by 0.06. So that's how I got that as far as this diameter. Um, when you do go to dimension something it's going to default to radius when you don't have an entire circle if you right click you can say dimension type and just check diameter and something that we didn't mention was uh, how we're making each of these sheets if you go back to place views you can click on new sheet now create another sheet on your browser bar so here I have column already here's sheet 2 which we're going to go back and rename table and notice that I am putting in my name, the title, the scale on each of these. And now we get to start in with the base. And once I finish the base, I'll put that up here as well. This is what I'm looking for on the base. And that includes having the depth of your hole. And things like this uh, limit dimension, the stack dimension here, to show how wide this has to be. As far as how to get the depth to show up, if you double click on your dimension you can add in this symbol from here and you can add in the value of your whole depth from this button here okay again go back to place views new sketch we're gonna be going and adding in the gear plate next so base search find your gear plate And if this isn't the view that you want to see, just navigate to the right one. And I probably could have done one more there. 
Okay, again, I'm going to pause and come back to... I went ahead and chose to make this 2 to 1 instead of 1 to 1. And there are no tolerances on this drawing. So we're just going to leave it just like this. Okay, we're going to make the uh, table pen next. I'll show you what that looks like. The drawing for the table pen. Uh, note that there is a tolerance on this diameter. It's important that it stays tight and holds the table down onto the base. Let's go on and look at the cover plate. Here's the cover plate. Uh, again, notice I changed my the number of points after the decimal to match whatever the dimension was. I did add a TYP to the holes here. Here's everything you need for the rack pad, and again note that the more important dimensions do have a tolerance to them, so make sure you get this added on as well. And we're almost done. We have a few more drawings. Now the punch holder gets just a little tricky, and that's because I want to see these holes and dimension to them, but I don't want a foreshortened view, so I have to go to place views and use an auxiliary view. So I'm going to choose a uh, view identifier scale that looks fine click OK and I missed something okay here we go uh, make sure you click on a slanted line and click away from it and it will create your auxiliary view you can then go back to annotate put in your center holes or center marks and then you should be able to dimension these uh, from this back edge as it shows here and in this case the back edge is actually this edge down to each center Oop, and I'll do that from time to time Okay, make sure you have the right number of decimal points. I am going to pause this and come back to it because we are running out of time. Alright, and here make sure you have in your whole notes that you have in your name and what it is, the scale. This is the last one of the normal drawings. The last two are both ones that uh, you may or may not have been required to do. Uh, I'm still going to go through and show how to dimension these and this since we use a gear generator we're just going to use the same kind of format they do you'll see that in just a second here I've just added a note giving us the same information that the drawing had so anyone else with the gear generator can go in and knock that out or if they want to go through all the calculations they could do this by hand I also noted the important things about the keyway and about the thickness and we just have the rack left and this is fairly straightforward so let's just skip to the finished product and here's the rack notice that I did add in an extra note for the uh, specifications on the teeth and we have tolerances on both the width of this it can slide up and down through the column and on the hole here for the uh, rack pad to slide into. We also have the chamfer here noted and we do have one sheet left this is for our uh, parts list or our bill of materials so let's go to that and for this one for your base we want to select your presentation view. We will want an ISO top right view of that and let's make it shaded and let's also put in for our base an assembly view to show what the whole thing looks like once it is put together. And I should have made that shaded as well. Okay, under annotate you have parts list. Should be able to drag and drop this in here and just make sure that you make your parts list look like the one that we found at the beginning of this document. The way that you edit this is that you right click on the text 
and you go edit parts list and here you can type in whatever